Here are three things I would do completely differently if I was learning Rust from scratch today. Starting with learning Rust by domain instead of by features. When I first started learning Rust, I wanted to go through every single resource, documentation, and book under the sun. But I ended up drowning in concepts I didn't have a need for. Macros, advanced tray bounds, unsafe code, you name it. I eventually realized that instead of trying to learn all of Rust, I should have picked a single domain and learned only the parts of Rust needed to be productive in that context. Rust isn't one skill. It's a collection of overlapping skill sets that look very different depending on what you're trying to build. For example, if you're building backend services or distributed systems in Rust, you'll need to understand async executors, locks and atomics, message passing via channels, actor frameworks like Actix, logging and tracing, proper error handling and reporting, database libraries like SQLX, CORM, or Diesel, etc. So instead of blindly reading the Rust book or following random tutorials, what you should do is focus on backend specific resources like the book Zero to Production in Rust, Rust Locks and Atomics, and the Asynchronous Programming in Rust book. On the other hand, if you're building embedded systems, you'll need an understanding of real-time operating systems, memory mapped IO, interrupts, unsafe Rust and the foreign function interface, const generics, using Rust without the standard library, embedded libraries like embedded hall, probar-s, heapless, and embassy, and so on. And the best resources for getting started with embedded Rust development that I've personally enjoyed are the simplified embedded Rust book and the ESP32 embedded Rust setup explained video by the Rusty Bits. And if you're doing blockchain development with Rust, one of my favorite resources to get started is the Building Bitcoin in Rust book. It's free to download and will teach you the fundamentals of blockchains and Rust at the same time. The point here is to only learn the subset of Rust that matters for your specific domain or use case. And even if you're unsure which domain to choose, the key is to pick something. This way, you can start learning Rust with purpose and direction. Most importantly, it prevents you from wasting time on Rust features you'll never use. The second thing I would do completely differently if I was learning Rust from scratch again is to stop pressing the reset button. This is so important because the default way most people learn Rust is that they start, make a bit of progress, hit a roadblock, lose motivation and stop, and then come back weeks or months later only to start back at square one. A lot of the engineers I've talked to got stuck in this same endless cycle, not making much progress for months or even years. But there's actually a couple strategies that are amazing at making sure you're consistently progressing. The first strategy is to find your community. One thing that really helped me early on was creating this YouTube channel. It forced me to learn concepts well enough to explain them clearly and helped me build a community of like-minded engineers. Many of them would jump in with feedback too, sometimes pointing out mistakes I didn't catch on my own. Having that community support and a level of accountability definitely helped me get over the initial hump of learning Rust. But the biggest shift came when I finally got personal Rust mentors a few years back. Staff were even principal engineers who used Rust in production every day. Not just solid Rust engineers, but people good at breaking down nuanced Rust concepts, giving me a structured learning roadmap that aligned with my own career goals, and checking in with me to make sure I was on track. Having that expert support basically guaranteed that I was consistently improving, because I had all the guidance I needed, all the accountability I needed, and I was able to drastically shortcut my learning curve. Because here's the thing, right? Tutorials are great for getting started. But the moment you try to build anything even slightly industry grade, you start hitting technical problems online tutorials never cover. And that's when you really want someone who's already been there. Someone who knows Rust and knows the domain you're working in so they can point you in the right direction. Otherwise, you spend weeks stuck on problems that a mentor could have solved in minutes. And your learning curve stretches out way longer than it needs to be. Now, obviously, not everyone is going to start a Rust YouTube channel or have professional Rust engineers readily accessible to help them master Rust. Finding good mentors and a strong, like-minded community is tough no matter what you're learning. There are plenty of smart engineers out there, but very few have the time, the willingness, or the communication and teaching skills to actually help you grow. And even when you do find the right people, it takes effort to build those relationships and stay connected. This is the reason I created the Let's Get Rusty Discord server years ago, and the main reason I now run the Rust Live Accelerator program, with community and personalized mentorship built in. And by the way, we'll be accepting new applicants for this program very soon. Spots are limited, so stay till the end of the video to learn how you can apply. Another way to approach this is to find competent Rust engineers in your company or maybe at local meetups. Whatever you go with, the important thing is having that community, accountability, and some type of mentorship. So you don't waste your time getting stuck, frustrated, and restarting your Rust learning journey over and over again. 
All right, finally, the last thing I'd do completely differently if I was learning Rust from scratch today. And honestly, this might be the most important one. But first, I'd like you to think about a very important question. What does it actually mean to be a competent Rust developer? We spend so much time learning Rust, trying to get better, but what does a competent Rust developer even mean? Is it the technical skills? Is it the problem solving? Or does it depend on how big of a Rust project you've led? There can be many different interpretations of what a competent Rust engineer means, depending on who you ask. But here's one I think is the most applicable, at least to the students who reach out to me for help with Rust. The true test of your Rust competency is whether or not individuals or companies are willing to pay for your Rust expertise. Ultimately, the job market decides if you're competent enough or not. Yes, learning and building are important. You want to reach a solid level of general Rust proficiency. And if you follow the first two steps in this video, you'll get there. But there's a point where it becomes really hard to judge your own skill level. You don't know if what you've learned is deep enough or if you're actually ready for real world expectations. The fastest way to get a real answer is to start applying for roles that you're genuinely interested in. And ideally, jump into a couple Rust interviews. The feedback loop you get from that is invaluable. You'll instantly understand what companies care about, what they ignore, and what gaps you need to close. And honestly, if I were starting over, I would learn Rust as if I was trying to get hired even if I didn't need a Rust job right away. Holding yourself to that standard changes everything. You learn more intentionally, you build higher quality Rust software, you think more critically, you focus on skills that matter in the real world. And let me take a guess here. When I said you should apply to a few Rust jobs and jump into a couple of Rust interviews, what was your first reaction? Did you feel that little bit of resistance? Maybe a thought like, I'm not ready for that yet, or I don't need that right now. And I totally get that. This is completely normal. It is a bit, nerve-wracking, right? But that feeling of hesitation might just be a sign of something deeper. If you've been learning Rust for a while and are still not comfortable with the idea of applying for roles, maybe you already have a sense that you've been learning the wrong things. Or you've been learning things that are too surface level, not quite deep enough to know you'll be able to handle real-life technical problems and challenges in a production environment. And that's exactly why putting your skills to the test early is so valuable. It exposes your knowledge gaps and forces you to confront what you need to work on. So these are the three things I do completely differently if I were to start over and learn Rust from scratch today. Be laser focused on learning the 20% of Rust I need for my use case or domain. So I don't get overwhelmed or discouraged. Stop hitting the reset button and maintain momentum through community, accountability, and some kind of mentorship. And lastly, learn Rust as if I'm preparing myself for the Rust job market, holding myself to the highest standard from the start. And not too surprisingly, these are all elements that come built in with our Rust Live Accelerator. This is the program I wish I had when I started learning Rust. Inside this private group training program, you'll learn the 20% of Rust you need by having a custom domain-specific roadmap created for you. Cut your Rust learning curve in half through community and mentorship. And put your Rust skills to the test early without the stress of interviews by getting direct feedback and guidance from professional Rust engineers. We're opening 30 spots for the next cohort very, very soon. And this time around, I actually got a few surprises for you. So click the link below to join the waitlist. You'll be the first to know when applications open and receive the surprises we only give out to those joining the waitlist now. So tap the link, join the waitlist, and I'll see you inside.